Um, they sing it. I know. <laughs> Would you have a prepared light before the, the light to lighten the Gentiles yeah. and the glory of your people Israel, right? That's exactly what Paul's doing here. The glory of the people Israel and a light to the nations. It's always what was intended. Always what was intended. And I mean that and that goes back to Genesis 3:15 and the first promise of the Savior before there ever was in Israel, right? God promises this to all peoples of the earth. All right. Um Romans 1.17 for in, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So righteousness is more than simply being right. Righteousness could be defined as being right with God. It's usually how I define it. Why must righteousness then be a gift? And you have to start with the Isaiah 64 text. What does Isaiah 64 say about your righteousness? Sinful and unclean. Sinful right? All of your righteousness is like filthy rags, right? Because any righteousness that you do is actually sinful. Right? So, so because your righteousness is sinful... The only way to become right with God is through Christ. Through Christ, for God to do something, yeah. right? Anytime you try righteousness, it's sinful. So the only way to be righteous is through something that God does, mm -hmm. right? And so, so people, um, uh, we uh, we talk about civil righteousness sometimes. There's a lot of people that have a lot of civil righteousness. Civil righteousness is um, uh, non-Christians who do. Seemingly good things, good works. But what does Martin Luther say about good works of unbelievers? He says they are not good works. Probably because, I don't know if this is why, but probably because Isaiah 64 says, all of your righteousness is like filthy rags. You can't do good with, apart from Christ. So, but you can look around the world and, you know, the people that give to uh, UNICEF or drop money in the Salvation Army bucket and, and who aren't Christians, right? Non-Christians do a lot of charity work. Jews are big on Philip. Right, yeah. Jewish people do lots of charity work. Mormons. Yeah. All kinds of good works. None of it are good works. There are no good works apart from Christ. Uh, and really, I mean, the end, end all and be all is because of the motivation, ultimately. I mean, you can get at the motivation of things. Now, that means that Christians actually sometimes do good works that are filthy rags, too, because Christians have wrong motivations sometimes. Sometimes Christians have wrong motivations for the good work that they do. Right? They want to be recognized. They want to feel good. They want to... Not bad to feel good. Right? But that's not the goal. That's not the goal of your good works, right? Yeah, didn't Jesus call out the Pharisees and uh, when they were praying or, or you know, right? right. Show Making them. the yeah. public show of things, right? That does yeah. no, yeah. no good to anybody for anything. So, so it's only then by God's grace that God declares us to be righteous. And in that declaration, then Jesus' righteousness is given to us, and our sin is laid on Jesus. And. Um, Call that the great exchange, right? Um, Jesus' righteousness for our sin. Letter B, what are the benefits of the gift? Eternal life. Everlasting life, life right? Uh, eternal ooh, challenge. Challenge question. What is the relationship of righteousness to faith? I, I would say probably salvation also. It's interesting in the in the uh, in the leader's guide. He uh, wraps salvation into this, but then it's not in the question. So maybe, what's the relationship between righteousness and faith and salvation? So, in the gospel, I don't care what you wrote, let's just uh, talk this through. Um, you probably wrote right things, but, but if you think about it this way. In the gospel, what does God reveal? His, his, I'm going to use the words here. Uh, salvation, right? Righteousness, faith, and salvation. Use those words. So in the gospel, God reveals his blank work to mankind. Saving work. 
<laughs> his saving work to mankind. That's exactly right. Right? You, we're, we're using the words righteous, grace, and salvation. Save, right? That works too. Right? So in the gospel, God reveals his saving work to mankind. What does faith do? Faith receives what? Faith receives salvation as a gift. gift. Right? Faith receives salvation as a gift. So in the gospel, God reveals his saving action to mankind. Faith receives that salvation as a gift. And then the gospel also reveals the gift of what? Grace. Third word. The other one that we haven't given. Righteousness. Righteousness, right? <laughs> um, the gospel reveals the gift of righteousness and creates faith to receive it. Creates faith to receive it. So all three are a result of the gospel. Faith, righteousness, and salvation. Faith, righteousness, and salvation. They're all a result of the gospel. And they're all given as gifts, gifts of the gospel. All given as gifts of the gospel. Sixteen A is a stupid question. Sixteen B, explain why you would or would not have continued reading the gospel. So if you read the first seventeen verses, or more likely heard the first seventeen verses of Paul's letter to the Romans, would have you wanted to continue hearing or not? Why? Why would or would you not have continued reading or hearing it? Uh, this, is a, this is a semi-stupid question, too. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm fine with that. But, but, yeah, usually when you're, you're reading something to learn, uh -huh. you want to know that the person trying to teach you knows what they're talking about. Ah, good, yeah, so okay. So sort of set that up. Yes, good. Right, I mean, that's a, I think that's the value of this question, right? Um, uh, it's... Uh, so there's an old movie called uh, Starship Troopers. Anybody seen Starship Troopers? Mm -hmm. It's a it's a uh, sci-fi it's a sci-fi thing, and uh, 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 the world government, right, uh, or the world news media is always it's a layered news media, right? And they tell you something, and then would you like to know more? Press this button. Would you like to know more? Press this button. And they take you to different news stories. So it's kind of a cool concept. But um, that's what this reminds me of, right? This question reminds me of that. Do, do you want to know more? Well, um, maybe not, right? And maybe I walk away from this ridiculous message uh, of this guy. But uh, quite possibly, I want to know more, right? Because he's talked about salvation and righteousness and faith and... How does that all relate to mm -hmm. me? So, so reading beyond verse 17 is going to help me know more, right? So that's what I saw in this question. I mean, it's kind of a, why would you not read it? Oh, I don't know, because you're not interested and you want to walk away from it. But um, I think that's why you would, why, why a person would, because Paul sets it all up for you, right? He, he sets up the tee shot, right? And, and he's back for the swing. He's done everything. The form is perfect. Everything is laid out for you. And now you want to see if, what the follow-through is. And the rest of the book is the follow-through, right? The rest of the book is verses 18 through the end gives you the follow-through of what he has set up. Romans uh, verses 16 and 17, if I call the theme verse for the entire book, well, probably, right? Um, write those on an index card, uh, um, however you wanted to do that, right? Do you find a key phrase that is meaningful to you? In those two verses, anybody have a key phrase they want to share? Our concluding thought. Salvation is for everyone. Salvation is for everyone. A good last final thought. Let's close with a word of prayer. Um, gracious Heavenly Father, we rejoice and give you thanks this day for um, the opportunity to study your word. Uh, we give you thanks for uh, gathering this group together to um, grow in your word together and uh, grow in our understanding um, of your um, grace, uh, your righteousness, your justification. 
uh, your salvation that you give to us as uh, free gifts. And, and we ask that through this study you would help us to um, uh, not only understand more fully for ourselves, but to understand more fully so that we might be uh, even better witnesses um, to the good news of a Savior who suffered and died for our sins and rose again to give us life and salvation. Bless us for the, through the rest of the week and bring us back again together uh, on Sunday to uh, receive uh, your gifts in word and sacrament and to um, uh, encourage uh, one another in the faith. We pray all these things in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, have a blessed day. Sorry, a little bit over. Um,